Hey everyone, it's Jeremy, and today I'm joined by my ball python, Charles. I know it's been a little while since I posted a video, I decided to take the holidays off, but now I'm back and I've got some big changes planned for my channel moving forward. I'll get to all that in another video though. For this video, I want to talk to you guys about a plant that I have been using in my bioactive ball python setups. A lot of people online have some really mixed opinions about using bioactive setups for ball pythons. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that ball pythons will crush and kill a lot of different plants. The types of plants you would typically keep in, say for example, a crested gecko enclosure or a chameleon enclosure don't really work out so well for a ball python because the ball pythons are very heavy bodied snakes and they will climb on these plants and they will crush and kill quite a few of them. Sorry if things got shifted a little bit, my camera just died, but we're back. What was I saying? So for my triple ball python enclosure, which does have bioactive substrate in all of the three levels, I was determined to find a plant that ball pythons wouldn't kill. And I did some experimenting, and I landed on moss. My thought process behind this was, you know, moss can survive being walked on. Moss can survive a lot of abuse. Maybe it can survive having a heavy-bodied snake like a ball python lay on it and crawl across it. And so far, it seems like I'm right about that. When I was at Aquashella in Chicago this last September, I got a few bags of sheet moss. Now, this is the same kind of sheet moss that you could get at like Petco or PetSmart or something. However, it was a lot fresher. I noticed that the sheet moss at the pet stores is generally already dead when you buy it. This stuff was still very much alive. And I went ahead and I put it in my ball python enclosures, kind of as a ground cover on the side of the tank opposite the heat lamp. So right here, this is the hot side. Over here is my moss. And I noticed not only is it a living plant that helps keep the bioactive ecosystem alive, but it also, being moss, helps keep the humidity up, which is very important for ball pythons, especially in my setup where I'm using ceramic heat emitters instead of under tank heating. Let's go ahead and put Charles back inside the enclosure and I can show you how this has worked out. First things first, if you have any kind of reptile that requires high humidity, like a ball python, I strongly suggest you get a water bottle similar to this. Something that has a pump that you can use to fill the nozzle with water and then a button that you can just hold to spray. It's a lot less strenuous on your hand than using a squirt bottle that you have to keep squeezing and it also provides a lot more humidity than a squirt bottle does. So here's my triple snake enclosure. If you're familiar with my channel, then you should already be familiar with this enclosure. It's one piece of furniture that holds three ball pythons separately. Up top we have Jean, in the middle we have Charles, and on the bottom we have Kitty. I am due to mist the enclosure down. The ceramic heat emitters that I use do evaporate a lot of the humidity, so I do have to mist the enclosures down daily. Also, it is good to mist the enclosures down daily anyway to provide moisture to the moss. But as you can see on Jean's enclosure here, this is the warm side. I have no moss on this side, but then you go over to the cool side where I have this bulb and you can see there is moss on this side of the enclosure. So over on the warm side, I just mist everything down and make sure that I raise the humidity level pretty much of the air. I'm not so worried about getting the substrate wet as I am making sure the humidity level inside the tank rises. Then on the other side where the moss is, I turn the nozzle a little bit to make sure I have a finer scope of spray, and I make sure I really get this moss good and wet. I also make sure there's good humidity level inside the enclosure overall, in the air, and I top off the drinking water as well. It has been about a month since my snakes have shed. They are probably going to go into shed soon, so I am providing a little extra humidity today. Up next is Charles's enclosure. Now this enclosure is reversed, where the warm side is on the right and the cool side is on the left. I alternated the warm and the cool side so that one side wouldn't get too hot or too cold overall in the enclosure. So let's go ahead and raise that humidity up by getting all of the moss good and wet. And then we'll come over here to the warm side and make sure we get a nice ambient moisture in the air as well. Also top off this water bowl. And finally we have Kitty's enclosure, which is consistently the driest out of all of them, but it's still damp enough to keep the moss alive, especially with daily mistings like I've been doing. 
let's go ahead and give that some moisture. This isn't really showing up well on camera, but now that I've moistened everything, I could see springtails crawling around inside the moss. Kitty is hiding inside the hide on her warm side. Just barely see her in there. She's in there. But there you have it. That is kind of my experience and opinion using moss as my plant inside of a bioactive ball python enclosure. For me, it's been working out really well with this setup. I know that a lot of people might disagree with this. I know that a lot of people might have other plants that they use. So just let me know in the comments what you think and what you use. As you can see, the humidity has really gone up inside these enclosures. This enclosure was at 24% before I misted everything down. Now it's at 92% and it's gonna drop back down and I'm gonna mist it again tomorrow. Also, all of my snakes are going to be going into shed within the next couple of weeks, and so I am providing them extra humidity right now just to kind of assist with that. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, hit that like button down below. And also, if you're not subscribed to me and you're this far into the video, you probably should be, so hit that subscribe button. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.